Thanks for tuning into another Bending Jeeps video. Not all of our videos can be of the trails. Some of us take care of our big blue hauler that gets our Jeeps to the trails. Today we're installing a generator upgrade supply remote start kit on our Predator 3500 watt generator. The Predator 3500 watt generator is really popular with the schoolies and the community and I suppose with RVers as well. A great little generator and the remote just is the icing on the cake. Let's you start it up in the rain. You don't have to go outside and get wet anymore. Uh, saves a lot of fuel by us being able to shut it on, turn it on and shut it off when we want to. So follow along in the video as we install this 2.0 version of the kit. Hey, let's take a peek at what's inside the uh, generator supply remote kit for my Predator 3500. Let's see. Yes, I opened the box already. But what was inside is my invoice and a note from Kenny. That's pretty cool. Um, price, let's see here. Um, actually, it doesn't show the price on the note. But, you know, it's less than 150 bucks. Oh, directions. Right, those are important. I shouldn't just toss them out. And, two pages, not a big deal. Some packing. Uh, soda cooler and some stickers. That's cool. We like stickers on our bus. Some sort of big module, some buttons, an antenna. Carefully packaged, that's cool. This must be the uh, actuator for the choke. That's pretty cool. And two remotes. I suppose that's what they are. I uh, had anticipated two of them because our inverter is only a 2000 watt inverter. And in the morning, sometimes if we've got the heat or the AC going and the coffee maker going, the battery voltage drops a little bit, we get a little alarm, and it'll be much, much better to be able to fire off the generator, supplement the power while we're doing the high draw stuff. But, let's see how this goes, right? Got a bunch of screws to take out, get this front cover off, and we'll talk more about who we bought this kit from in a second. Let's see what's underneath all this cover stuff here. Is that all the screws? How does this work? Should I disconnect the battery first? Sounds like a good idea. Maybe we can get these instructions out first. All right, this is what I'm working with. Generator, plug and play, start and stop. Should be pretty easy. And here we have the front panel already unscrewed. And uh, looks like plenty of room in there for, yeah, check that remote out. I understand you only use two buttons in it, so one's for start and choke and one's to shut it off. Pretty cool. All right, up next, we'll go ahead and clean the back area of this generator because it's a little dusty and start sticking in modules. So that new module is pretty huge. And it just wedges into the generator with the adhesive and the Velcro. So, uh, that's following directions, though. And it does fit. I mean, it's jammed in there. So, we held it on for a while to make sure the adhesive was set. And we're on to the next stage. So, let me uh, read ahead in these directions, right? I mean, it's important and all. So, peel off Velcro. Place it back opening. Unwind the antenna wire. Did it. All right. So, let's go find the green and red connector through the hole on the lower right side behind the front panel. All right, let me go find some stuff here. Hang on. 
So a green wire with the red connector goes down through this hole to the nether regions to be dealt with later. Next. Next, directions tell us to unhook the connector from the start and stop switch, which is right here. And then we connect in the appropriate plugs to match. So that's that's pretty easy. So easy, yeah. Caveman could do it. That's plugged in there. That's plugged in there. Cool. Let's see. What do we got next? Uh, let's see. Female connectors. Plug male into female. Small black connector. With two black wires. So stop connection. Got it. That's this right here. All right, disconnect, disconnect the black stopper connection. Locate the black connectors in the module harness with the red and black wires. Check, got it. So we're gonna put these in line. This is cool. Let's see, got it. We got the male connector here. Let's make sure we put this in right. Let's see. There we go. That's how it lines up. Common sense, just looking at the connectors, you'll see where the latches are on them and you'll know which way to orient the wires. So what do we got next? Uh, all right. Plug the male. The female, check. Install the kill switch. Unscrew the reset button. All right. Otherwise, drill a quarter inch hole. Right. I'm going to go get my drill and my bit, and we'll put in the kill switch. No problem. Easy peasy. Here it is. Uh, but I definitely want my reset button here for my uh, 12 volt because I use that all the time for charging my or running my uh, exhaust fan for my generator so going to get the drill in a bit be right back all right drilled a little hole in my cover right there for my kill switch tried to find an open space around all the stuff and I decided that was the best spot and I'm gonna drop the switch in and hold it in place I'll get my washer on a lock washer. I'll tighten that up a little bit. If I can get my numb fingers to do it, because it's not that cold out. All right. Got it. So I'm going to spare you guys the video of me going to find a wrench and tighten up the switch. But rest assured, it's going to happen. When I turn the camera back on, it's going to be like magic. Back in a sec. Told you it wouldn't be long. So uh, kill switch is installed. I'm not real thrilled with the cover of it. I might put some glue on it or something later on to make sure that little rubber weatherproof cover doesn't slide off. But... That'll work for now. Now, what's next on these instructions? Um, install kill switch. Right. Quarter inch hole. Install kill switch. I'm going to show it inside. Right. Uh, connect the ground ring to the front ground terminal using the number seven socket. Must be the ground connection. Check. Number seven socket, seven millimeter. All right, let me go find that and we'll make it happen. Magic, back in a sec.
Really, New York? Really? You got your black flies out, bite me? We're in the dead of winter? Well, practically. I mean, it's the uh, middle of October. Stupid black flies. Just in case you guys don't know anything about New York black flies, no respect for bug spray. They don't care if you coat with off. The only solution I've been able to find the time I've been visiting here is you go inside and put on some pants. Other than that, you have to suffer with them blood suckers biting you out here in the wilderness and luckily they're a little slower than the average housefly but I mean really and the bite I guess the bite's not really that painful but come on you guys get rid of these black flies directions for the right side panel says we got two rubber plugs up top to unhook three 10 millimeter screws at the bottom and one screw on the front uh must take the wheels off to remove the panel completely. Um, hubcaps, cotter pen, washer, wheel. Man, I wish I was doing the wheel upgrade now and putting some bigger tires on this. But, all right, let's, uh, let's work on getting this done. We'll see how it goes. Up next, open cover, right? Hubcaps. With this rain, so he tries to start, I'm gonna have to abandon this project and cover everything up. see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Alright. It's good that I've been uh, taking these off because I've been wanting to get at this front wheel lock for a long time and keep it from being so damn rattly. Perfect. Yeah, that wheel lock. Ugh. I'm tired of that thing rattling. I'm just gonna take it off. No, you know what? You're right. Keep it back on there. We'll find some way to isolate that. Let's get this cover off. One more screw. Or is it all three on this side? Yep, all three of them. All right. Let's 
see what kind of trouble we find in here, huh? Ooh, generator. Never even been in this side of it. We got a little starter here. That looks like it's pretty good shape. Nice to know how to take care of it. Um, I don't see anything falling off, so that's good. No bolts have fallen out. That's all good, too. All right, well, let's see uh, what directions call for here. Now that we got this cover off. Oh, you know what? I think I gotta take both sides off. Let's see. Uh, actuator. Oh man, I gotta take both sides of this off and then twist it back and forth. I wish I had some sort of rotisserie for this. All right, back in a minute. Directions say loosen up this eight millimeter bolt on top of the starter. So we'll get that loose. bolt out and then it says position the actuator with the short end of the bracket to the right and the long end dangling to the left the actuator is sitting on top of it do not attach it yet so let's see if I can follow those directions this whole thing's been really easy so far as long as you take a moment to reread the directions so Let's see. Position actuator with the short end of the bracket to the right. And long end angling to the left. It kind of looks like that. Must be the only way you can do it, right? No? Short end to the right. There we go. That's a smart fella. Alright, so that's how that's going to go. Oh, we gotta run the cable in. Let's see, actual cable generator choke to the right of the middle brace. Got it, it's on the other side. Underneath the spring. Feed the choke cable in the gap between the motor and the gas tank to the right side of the fuel line. Do, do, do. I see it down there. Let's see if we can get you to see it down there. All right, can we? So we're gonna feed in. There's an alligator clip straight back there where my finger's pointing. That's the fuel line. So we're going to go just to the right of that. And I can see the silver of the choke thing over there. So let's see how much of a chore it is going to be to slide this in there. huh? That's a wild and crazy thing. And I think we got a bullseye now. So that's in there. I'm just going to put this bolt back in a little bit to hold me still until the directions tell me to tighten it. And then we're going to take the camera and the directions over to the other side and see uh, what we got to do. So unhook the spring and choke cable by compressing the spring away from you and lifting the cable out of the channel. Wow. Let's see. So that's over here. And Pressing the spring, lifting the... Oh, you're going to test me, aren't you, Ben? All right. Clean up the work area here. Get you down. Whoa. Where you can see what's going on. All right. So, compressing the spring a little bit. Oh, that's tricky, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna need some uh, pliers or a screwdriver. There's a little flat blade screwdriver. That's out. Where's my new cable at? There's my new cable. So, that looks like that's threaded right. <coughs> Twist the choke cable below actuator. Right. So, we're going to put our cable in the slot first. 
And then we're going to pull the choke cable in behind it. And make sure it's locked underneath it. Alrighty. Alright, so now, ugh, now, it's set. Um, twist the choke cable so it's under the actuator cable, pictured above. Check. What do you think you'd want the... Alright, show cables underneath the actuator cable. Check. Alright. Reattach spring. Got it. Attach the actuator bracket. Alright. Let's go back over there. Remember how I put the bolt in to hold everything still? I gotta take the bolt back out. That's where the ground connects. This blue wire with the ring connector. Not a big deal. Boop. Bolt through that. Bolt through the bracket. And back in the starter. This kit so far has been as advertised Plug and play, minimal guessing, minimal backtracking, even for an ADD guy like me. So, I'm anxious to see. The end result works as advertised as well, right? Tighten that up. No torque specs. That's okay. And then this wire simply goes to this wire. So we're plugged in. Now, if I had my rope here for my pull start, that broke off a long time ago. Um, that would be something I do on my next generator is put some sort of cushion on the back side of this and on the cover, because there's a sharp edge on the cover where that rope rides. So, But that's that's all hooked up. What's the next part of the directions? Um... Test the choke by turning the generator to stop and tapping the A button. It will engage the starter and the choke at the same time. So, generator's on stop. Right, made sure that's on stop. And tap the button. All right, let's check and see. Got a remote right here. Um, I guess there's batteries in it. It said just tap the button, right? Uh. Ooh, that's pretty cool. All right. So we saw the choke move on the other side. Let's go to the other side and we'll take a peek at that. Watch this. Like magic. Watch that choke right there. Yeah, baby. All right. So, if that's successful, it says we're going to do a full start test, right? Uh, choke test is successful. Turn knob to run. Press A for one second. If successful. Press B to stop generator. <laughs> we're so close. All right. So, we're going to turn this knob to the run position, which will be one. Turn, and here we go. Let's see uh, what happens here. One second to see if it runs. Beautiful. Work.
works as advertised. That is awesome. Now, let's put this baby back together and uh, be done with it. So sweet. All right, to fix my antenna dilemma, I drilled a big old hole in the side of my box here. I'm not really worried about weather getting into that because there's a factory big old hole on the other side. So I just kind of pried it out, drilled out the hole with a uh, step bit, made it look hideous, uh, pushed the antenna cable through, and I think I'm going to tuck it right up inside here. See so yeah, how I tucked it up? I'm going to tuck it right inside there, and uh, being the uh, guy I am, going to use a zip tie to uh, fix it here. Well, will it stay forever? I don't know. Seems to me zip ties are pretty much structural when it comes to fixing my Jeeps. This is alongside the metal bracket for the emissions control. And it's uh, resting on top of the air filter box. So it's out of my way. Zip tied. Not looking too hideous, right? It should be safe there. We'll see what our reception is like uh, later on. All right. So I'm going to leave this on for the rest of my reinstalling covers. It's all like blah, 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 reinstalling stuff. But we'll see. So what I got done today is put the remote on my generator. Generator still on the back deck of the bus. Let's see if it starts from, what, 20 foot away? Ooh, magic, and it shuts off. Awesome. It's time to go further away. Let's see. Out here, beautiful Lake Sakandega has been our guest spot for a little bit. So I'm going to say this is 100 feet away. No, 50 tops. Probably 50. Let's try it again. Here it goes. Ooh, it starts again.
and shuts off. But that was a little risky. Let's go to the other side of the road, just like a chicken would. And so now I'm a full road width away. That's got to be getting close to 100 feet. So let's try it again. Bam! Starts up again. Let's see if it'll shut off. So rumor has it that the shut off gets a little affected by the electronics in the generator. So uh, having read that already, I'm not surprised that the shut off feature doesn't work as far away as the... There we go. Just shut it off. Not bad. I mean, this road's got to be 50 foot, 40 for the, uh, no, what is, what is the road? 12 foot travel lanes, 24 plus two foot shoulders. Yeah, anyways, whatever. We're pretty far away from it and it was starting up. The real thing is, I want to start it up from inside the bus. So, pretty cool. Thank you, Generator Upgrade Supply, for uh, this kit. It's awesome. Plug and play, just like you promised. Starts right up, on demand. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And I can shut it right off too. So perfect addition to my big blue hauler to keep me from having to get outside during the weather to shut stuff off. And we are on the road in a couple days, leaving upstate New York and hopefully heading south to find some new trails. Can't wait to get on the road again. So we haven't been in the bus for uh, a month or so. We've been helping out family members with health problems. And uh, so this little project here, getting this remote on and our remote start for our generator, this has been a great little uh, pick-me-up for me because I can't wait to be back on the road living in our house. I don't think you can hear the generator, but I can shut it off from inside. Bye-bye, generator. Just shut off.